Hello anybody and welcome, I'm Christian from ISI and this is a brand new episode on procedural animation. So it's been a while since my last one, but I've had some free time so I'm working on the procedural spider again. So I haven't been working on the humanoid though, just the procedural spider, due to the fact that humans and spiders walk very differently. So when I do code for a procedural spider it doesn't always translate very well to a humanoid. Anyway, the spider can now be seen to be looking a bit more realistic, a little bit more interesting. He walks more realistically now. As you can see, he walks around quite nicely and he can rotate much better and stuff. Anyway, the main thing, while that's cool and all, the main thing is actually that he can now climb over objects and stuff. As you can see, he can now climb up this surface. And he's completely, perfectly normal. It's as if he was standing on the floor. So really, the way it's working is it just does the normal movement, but now the actual spider chassis, or the body of the spider, now aligns itself to the surface it's walking on. And it just uses some fancy cross products and surface normals from raycasts. And so you can see it can just walk around, and it can walk around just everything. And then I've also got a spacebar button to slow down time if you're really interested in seeing him glitch through walls. Anyway, so that's basically it. Pretty much the same as before, except it's a little bit more fancy. Some of the formulas have been fixed because I had some errors in some of them. And yeah, now he can walk on anything. I do have some plans for making him even better, because right now there's no rigid bodies, there's no colliders, there's no nothing. It's all just done with a couple of raycasts. The same raycast that it was doing for his legs, it's now using for a line of the surface. So if I was to use a rigid body, I could do more interesting things, like preventing him from walking inside of walls like that. It happens very rarely, but sometimes it happens. Anyway. Um, overall it's pretty consistent and if you if you're designing levels for this sort of game you would obviously plan for him falling through things so you would make sure the environment's better designed so that's pretty much it but I will now go off the code if I can I'll start with the procedural leg placement because at least has changed here overall it's exactly the same as it was before there's a few extra th um, variables at the top here just being used for um, the procedural locomotion and aligning them. So I have the leg grounded and the stick point and things like that. <clears throat> if I scroll down, this is all most of the same until you get to about here. This is where it's changed a bit. So the step point is now running this formula every second, so it's actually, or every frame. It's actually less performant than the last version because it's actually doing ray casts every frame instead of once every step. And that's just due to how I've changed it to make it look a bit nicer. So now instead of just setting it to the world target like it used to, it's now world target plus world velocity. And the world target is set to half of what it used to be. And so overall it's still going to the exact same position. But if you were to change directions mid-step, it will now detect that and it'll adjust the foot position to put it in the right place. So that's about the only difference. Everything else is pretty much the same. Yeah, except for a few, you know, obviously this has now been put in its own function to make it easy to use and things like that. And then this is the function that sets the world velocity. It now gets set to a lerp between world velocity and the new velocity by 1f minus percent. So what that means is when it's just beginning its step, so it's at 0% of its step being completed, it'll move to the new velocity very easily. But if it's at maximum percentage, and then it's 1 minus the percentage, it's now 0. And so it won't move to the new velocity if it's finished or almost finished its step. So that just prevents it from, you know, moving like from over here to all the way over here in like half a second because the velocity's changed. It'll only move like a short distance towards it. Most things have changed in the creature controller, however. There's been a, f there's a new tab here I've called alignment. And that's just got a few variables that I need for alignment. So now a few more, once again, a few more things have been moved into their own functions. So there's now a new function, calculate orientation, and then the old movement code has been put into its own move function, and then the leg velocity calculations have been moved into their own um, functions as well. So if I scroll down, you can see the calculate leg velocity is almost identical, just a few of the formulas had to be fixed. I was multiplying world velocity, multiplied by time between steps, that just pretty much determines how far the leg's going to move in one second. And it used to be being multiplied by max target distance, which is pretty much the distance between the leg, the foot position, and the resting position before it decides to take another step, just to prevent its leg from getting too far behind. So you can sort of adjust that to get the behavior you want. But for some reason I was multiplying it by that, and I don't know why, but I fixed that now, so that's actually working much better. And the rotational point has also been fixed, because there are a few things, so now it's um, 
I'm setting it to the R speed minus time between steps divided by 2. So again, that's the same as this one. I just have to do it in here because it's an, obviously a rotation. So there's angles involved. So I have to do it here rather than here. And then I'm just drawing an arc for debug purposes. Uh, the move function is pretty much exactly the same, except now the input is calculated and then translated into world space coordinates using the transform transform direction function. And so that just makes the velocity or the input aligned to the spider so that forwards will always be forwards relative to the spider instead of the camera world. And then the calculate orientation function is where most of the stuff is happening. So we're calculating the average up and average surface distance as well as whether it's grounded or not. And then there's a few variables for calculating cross product. So in here, you can see that I'm getting the point that the leg is on, and then I'm getting the average surface distance, and that's just the inverse transform point, and I'm getting the y variable. It converts it from world space to local space coordinates, and then I can just get the y to, to get how far away it is from the spider. So that tells me how far away it is from the ground, pretty much. And then I'm getting a, b, and c, which I'm using in the cross product. So the c is the, the, um, the result from the cross product. So the A is just the transform dot position minus the point, and it's normalized. So that's the diff distance from, that's just a direction pointing from the leg to the center of the spider. And then B points from the current leg to the next leg to its left, and that's calculated using the legs and the step point. But I'm having to go through another array because I need this in order of a circle going around the spider, whereas the actual legs function, it goes from in order of the legs I want, so I pretty much have it going from this leg, this leg, this leg, this leg, and then it goes up and it does the other way around, and that just makes the spider look more interesting. So by using this one, it's just another lookup table where I put the eye of the current leg, and then it'll return the index of the leg I want. And so that gives me all the legs in a circle, and then I get the cross product of that, and that'll actually tell me the up direction. So if I've got a leg here and here and then the center of the spider is here I get a vector that points up because of the right hand rule yeah so a b and you get c and then I add that to the up vector using the c but I multiply it by the sensitivity curve which is just a um, see if I can find it quickly there it is so it's just an animation curve that goes from here to here it just biases it more towards larger values so if you look here um sensitivity curve value of the C's magnitude. So the clo the more parallel A and B are, the smaller C's magnitude will be. So I'm pretty much using that as an accuracy calculation because when the legs are close together, um, the C's magnitude gets smaller because they become more parallel. And then, so I'm just using that to multiply them so it doesn't get considered as important. And then I'm also getting the step normal, which is just the surface normal from the ray cast on the leg itself. And if it's set to zero, so I set it to zero if it can't find a, if it hasn't actually stepped on anything, I'm using the transform dot forward. That's used because if the spider's like, if this is the roof, the spider's crawling across here, he can walk around perfectly fine and then onto the top. But if he's walking down and he started to crawl down the edge, his feet wouldn't be touching the ground as he was going around the edge. And if I, I used to have it set to um, trans, uh, vector three dot up, and so what would happen is as his foot came off, it would then go floating into the air and the whole spider would just walk off the ledge instead of crawling around. But now because it's set to forward, that's the up of the spider, that's the forward of the spider. And so if I'm trying to set the forward of the spider to the, the new up, the spider will rotate around so that he's aligned with that edge. And so that works way better now. And fixes lots of problems with him just walking right off edges and floating off into the oblivion. Anyway, and then if I do step on something, I'm just obviously using the step normal. And then the grounded is just an or equals legs i dot leg grounded. So this, if any of the legs are touching the ground, I just consider the entire spider to be touching the ground. And these are just some draw rays. That was when I was testing with the cross product. And then here in the up, I just then divide it by the legs length as well as the average surface distance. And so that just gives me the average. And then I just set the... I just draw a ray from the current position up just so I know which direction the spider should be looking. That was again when I was testing it. They, these all can be just removed. You don't really need them. And then I just rotate the spider. I then adjust his distance from the, or I translate him on his uh, his self um, axis, I guess. And so I'm just moving him up and down relative to the average surface distance and the desired surface distance. That just keeps him always at roughly the same distance from the ground. And then I just, if he's not grounded, I'm just using transform.translate by some time to delta time and an arbitrary number. That just does some, as you can see, simple gravity. 
and that's pretty much it and all of that's pretty simple and then he's got some googly guys because i felt like it so it just randomly gives him a new direction to look at and his eyes just wobble around but yeah as you can see it all works pretty well the system is surprisingly good at what it does i guess it obviously needs to be improved i'm believing yeah, i believe i'll probably add a rigid body to it at some point like a rigid body center of this body and then I will like move him using physics and then the legs will move around after him. And that'll give you abilities like you can have your spider like maybe sling a web and then swing down from the ceiling and things like that. And it'll also hopefully stop him from walking through walls and stuff. But yeah, that's all for now and I will see you next time.